Yo guys, how you doing? Today we're going to teach you how to paint white with only three colors and with no airbrush. Now this is something that a lot of hobbyists have trouble with. Uh, it's, the, it's, it's not a difficult process, but it is a time consuming process. And I'm going to show you exactly how to sort this out so that you can make your minis look as bright white as this guy right here. Super simple. Let's go. So first off, I've painted the bike, got the airbrush work out the way. We're taking some Games Workshop Celestra Grey, we're thinning it down with some water. Now when you're painting white, I did say it was time consuming. You have to put on several uh, thin coats to avoid any brush marks, to avoid any blotchiness uh, that you may get on the surface. I think most people, most hobbyists at some point have tried to paint white and they've kind of taken a white paint and then they've sort of blobbed it on the mini until you finally got the whole mini looking white or the shoulder pad or whatever it is you want to paint. End of the day, the result does not look good. You have to approach this from a perspective of taking your time with it. Uh, but none of what we're about to do is difficult. Everything is pretty straightforward. It just requires you to have a little bit of patience and to take your time. So we're thinning our paint down. We're not getting anywhere close to a glaze consistency or a wash. You can see this Celestra Grey, which is a great grey to use as your base coat for this, is going on with a fair amount of stick. You know, you're getting a, a lot of that grey showing through. Is it a completely smooth coat? No, definitely not. And we'll show you that in a bit more detail as we go on. Now, first off, I want to say I'm using Celestra Grey because it's one of the, it sounds silly, but the darkest, brightest greys that Games Workshop have. It's a very, very pale grey. And you've seen my contrast style paint. We've got this spike that's got absolute black, not that far away from a really nice gray. If you would like to have your paint match mine, so have something that has that high sense of contrast, that dramatic style of painting, I'd suggest using a gray like this rather than something that's already been mixed in with white from the get-go, because you wanna have a gradient appear. And after our first coat of paint, you can see that there's, that there's a, not a great base coat down. We're gonna need to do this again. We're gonna have to go through this at least one more time to get that smooth base coat, maybe even two or three more times, especially on these flatter areas like the greaves and so on. That's gonna need to be done. But this is why we're using Celestra Grey. It's a base coat from GW, it's got good coverage. And like I said, it's far enough away from white that you've got something that is gonna give you that contrast, you're gonna get those transitions, those gradients through it, and I'll show you how to get those gradients with a brush, not an airbrush. Second coat down, and it's looking much better. Need to get them in just there on the leg and do that third coat, like I said, just to ensure that we are getting something that is absolutely spot on the money for our base coats. It's obviously the most important part of this. And the other areas of miniature you can see, they also need a little bit of work and a little bit of love as well. But things like the backpack, maybe part of the thigh and so on. Once you've done that and you're happy with it, now you start breaking out some white ink. Now white ink is the secret to doing all of this. It is absolutely the key. White ink is a very thin product. It's designed to go through things like airbrushes with ease, uh, dip pens and stuff like that. And therefore the pigment for it must be extremely finely ground. What this means is when you've got that pigment in an in a acrylic suspension, the fluid, the medium that makes up that ink, you've got something that still retains its power. Now we're mixing this with our Celestra Grey and we're brushing this on almost to the edges of the armor panels that we've put on when they're small ones like this. On the larger ones like the leg plate, that shin guard, we're gonna make sure we start to build up our gradient with it. For everything else, we can just sort of come in pick up some of the areas that are gonna be brighter. Now, in a lot of the painting world, this would be described as a volumetric highlight. And that's a very fancy word for saying, essentially, we're painting the areas that are naturally brighter. But rather than doing an edge highlight, we're kind of creating that gradient from the darkest point up to the lightest point. If you have a look at things like pictures of a ball, uh, something shiny, lit by natural ambient light, you can find loads of those kind of images on the internet for reference. You'll get something like this, this volumetric highlights. So on the greave there, you see we're painting about the lower two third. We're keeping all our brush strokes that are going along the length of the armor panel in that straight line. And we just tidy at the edges as and where we need to. 
for the upper sections of the body, I like to highlight upwards, whereas the lower sections from the waist down, we highlight down. So on the shoulder pad, the elbow, and so on, you can see we're doing exactly the same thing, working that top two thirds though, rather than the bottom two thirds. Let's not forget the helmet. This thing obviously is a focal point in the minutes. You want people to be looking at this guy square in the face. So we're gonna make sure that all of the high areas on the hat itself have got this volumetric highlight. And again, go and look up some reference material for that kind of thing. I'll put some links in the video description below for places that you can look for this kind of thing. And it does really, really help out your painting. It helps you to find out exactly where these lines and these highlights need to go. And once you get a, a sense of that, then you can throw away your reference materials. Even on the helmet though, you can see all of these areas underneath. These need a little bit more of that edge highlighting style, but you can make these edge highlights kind of thick for now and we'll refine those later on. So getting around the eye and those face vents. Next up, we're taking more of that white ink and we're increasing the amount of that that we use with our Celestra Gray. We're also highlighting less of that area. And you can see there, we're starting to build that gradient up. This is super, super important. By the time we've done another coat just like this, you'll start to really get that flow over. And with the white ink being so thin, you don't need to get a lot of water in on this. Now, if you wanna see me paint live, then obviously we've got the Twitch streams four nights a week. We've also got a Patreon, and I've got some clutch Patreon members to shout out. Hicko, James P, Stop Dead, John Pavidis, Ray Harkins, Aaron Pritchard, Tom Strokes, Robert Russell, Manuel Garcia, Manu Michael Morton, and Mario Dorb. Thank you very much for coming and joining my Patreon campaign. You guys are literally helping keep the lights on now. We're doing this full time. This is literally what I do now. It's content creation, Twitch streaming, and commission painting. Twitch streams four nights, so four days a week, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, live from 9 p.m. UK time, and then Saturdays, live at 11 a.m. You can also catch me on the Hellstorm streams on a Monday from 6 p.m., where me and Mikey will do some hobby. You can keep up with your hobby resolutions for the year. Hopefully, we'll see you there. Cheers, guys. As you can see, though, once we've got that highlight passed down, we're starting to get some of those gradients. It looks a little bit rough for now, but don't you worry. Once we get this one on, which is a one part Celestra Grey to two parts white ink mix, you're gonna start really pushing the boundaries of our highlights. And you're gonna see we're getting really, really close to white. Now it's super, super important that at no point in the process up to here have you used just white ink. If you've painted your area that you're trying to get white with white already, you have nowhere to go for those highlights. And you really, really need that to create that sense of drama and those fantastic gradients and highlights and transitions that we really, really want here. So make sure you're still using a mix of this. For the helmet, make sure you're getting all of the harsh edges on this. And again, while you're using a bit more of an edge highlighting style on things like the face, you still wanna make sure your highlights are a little bit larger than you would normally do for an edge highlight. So both a little bit longer and a little bit wider, just so you've got somewhere for that final highlight to go. Now, what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna cut away quickly and I'm gonna finish off the rest of the model off stream. We've put in our white base coats because this can be a little bit messy. Now and tidy up everything else and we'll come back to it. So here he is. We've got every other part of the miniature done apart from decals and the base as you can see. And this is because if we get any of that, whether it's the red, the black, the grays, the metallics, whatever, on our white, we can tidy it up with this step now, which is adding in some shadows. We're taking some Administratum Gray, another Games Workshop paint, only the third part of paint that we have used to create this white. We're thinning it down and we're using this like a recessed shade. Now, most people I know would use a wash product to do something like this. So whether you're using some GW washes, whether you're using some oil washes, army painter washes, whatever it might be, that's normally where you'd go, but you don't need to. I'm using Administratum Gray because it's a nice soft mid gray. It's still a little bit lighter than things like your Mechanica standard, you know, that kind of battleship gray, that kind of thing. And you can see right here, it's giving you those nice edges. It's giving that real deep recess. And because we're putting that in here, all of those ever so slightly messy brush strokes now get snapped into focus. 
these straight lines that we put in really help to break up the armor panels that we've got here and really delineate those areas so when we get our final edge highlight on we've got our lightest version of white which would be that edge highlight next to our darkest version of white which will be this gray recess shade that we're putting in make sure you hit all of these little vents and so on as well of course regardless of what it is that you're painting you may or may not have those now a lot of people i know when they recess shade their white they use black and here's why you shouldn't i'm painting in a little bit of a crease in the back of the knee it's one of those soft vented areas that marines have on their power armor and you can see that's really really abrupt imagine that black line now along all of the recesses we just painted it would not look good Here's the comparison between the two legs. So this is the leg that we've done. The other one was one that we haven't. You can see here, we've got those really nicely defined areas. The other one still looks a little bit soft. You could leave it like that, but really, if you're gonna be painting white, you know it's a process that you're signing up to right from the get-go. You may as well get those areas in there. Now for the helmet, there's less defined edges. So I like to do this little stripe along the back and over that kind of ear covering and around the mohawk of the Marine because that's gonna give us a nice dark area as well as the vents on the front of the face as well. Now we're taking some straight up white ink. You do not need to thin this stuff. If you use a wet palette, just be aware that it works ever so slightly strange on a wet palette. Only put down what you'll need at that time. Otherwise it will just kind of water itself down, blur itself out a little bit. You're not gonna get on very well with it. Apply this like you would a regular edge highlight. So no need for any crazy special effects here. Keep your, your lines nice and thin, get that brush control working for you. And if you're unsure where to put your highlights, there's plenty of reference out there, both in my own videos, in pictures on the internet, and so on. When you're applying this, you are really snapping those edges into focus. So this is the very first time that we've used pure white on the miniature. And like I said earlier on, this is the absolute step to do it. You must do it right at the very end. Look at that leg now, all of those highlights going in there, just hitting some of those areas on the knee. That looks super bright white. Remember for the upper sections of the body, we're highlighting upwards and towards where the light would be. So make sure on all of these areas, that's what you're doing with the backpack and so on. Get that separation, get those dynamic highlights in there and really ensure that the model pops. Let's get them all assembled and that is a fantastic looking white. And as you can see, no airbrush necessary, three different pots of paint, you're onto a winner right away. It takes time, all in, the white took me about two hours or so to do on this one marine but if you were just doing some shoulder pad interiors and things like that you could get this done for an entire squad in that length of time we've got the weathering effects on there we've got our decals on there if you want to see how we did the black we did an entire video on that go and check that out there'll be a link in the video description below this is a brilliant brilliant method of painting white i hope you guys have fun with it if you try it out show me some pictures put them in the comments and so on like comment subscribe peace out everyone i'll leave you this sweet montage of our apothecary because even apothecaries need a montage